Hey everyone, Simon here. Um, this is a quick recap of uh, some of the techniques in uh, Gambler's Dharma uh, to illustrate a couple of the foundational basic methods uh, that are introduced straight up from chapter one. And uh, I am really not looking at sports these days much, but I do get called up by students sometimes who say, hey, can you look at this game for me? What do you think of this game? And today was particularly interesting because uh, I haven't, like I said, been in it for quite a while. Um, so these are some of the games I looked at. And let's take a, let's take a look see here to see what's going on. So this first game is Seattle versus Oakland. The team that is in uh, uppercase is the favorite. Okay, so as we know, the favorite gets the ascendant. And the first thing, those of you who have, uh, are familiar with my techniques for predicting the outcome of any uh, sporting event, uh, one of the very basic, very foundational techniques is that when there are benefic planets on either side of a house, it, call, uh, it creates something I call sky. Shubha Kartari Yoga is the Sanskrit for it, uh, which is a reinforcement of that team. So that team in this case is the underdog because the underdog always gets the seventh house. This, of course, is the seventh house. And I'm doing this in the North Indian style, but I could just as easily show it in the South Indian. I just won't because I'm more used to the North Indian. So immediately we have a, a strong advantage for the underdog, a nine-point advantage. And, and those of you who have read my book know about how to allocate the points. And... Um, in addition to other things like sublords, um, uh, which I'm not going to get into, immediately the underdog has a strong advantage. The other thing you'll see is a very basic technique of Vedic astrology says that the team with the malefic in its ascendant will win. So, for example, uh, for casting a chart for a surgery or casting a chart for any event that requires intensity, focus, and, 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 and uh, violence, you want a malefic, a malefic in the ascendant. So here, the sun is a malefic. You see the underdog doesn't have any malefic. We don't count the outer planets, okay? Uranus, Neptune, Pluto. In terms of being malefics, benefics, we don't use them for this technique. We do use them for cuspal strength and other techniques. All right, so let me clear this out. So here, the underdog not only has a strong malefic, it also has these two benefics supporting it. So this is like, Basically, um, all right, you, um, somebody stole your uh, lawn hose and they're not giving it back. And you say, please give it back. No. So what do you do? You get um, uh, Chuck Liddell or you get uh, some big Mike Tyson, right? That's the malefic. With his two bodyguards, these two benefics, you go over to his house and say, Yo, give me my hose back. And of course, you get your hose back. So the underdog has all of this strength. In addition to that, the what we call victory house strength is when a team has malefics on its side. So Mars being in the sixth house of the underdog also gives it strength. And the sun, that's a full six points. The favorite does have Saturn in its 11th house. But that's measly. And uh, again, the underdog. Uh, so overall, we have overwhelming evidence pointing to one side. And that's when we have a situation called fixed karma, uh, where there, the outcome is pretty much fixed. No matter how hard the favorites try, it's not going to happen for them. I mean, unless we miss something, and, and we didn't miss something here because, let's see, I mean, I think the game is still going on, but let's check the score here. Uh, Seattle versus Oakland, well, it's seven to nothing, uh, and Seattle is the underdog. So they're winning 7-0, uh, and we're presuming the game is going to go their way. All right, so that's one chart, uh, and this is going to be the basis for all of the charts we do today. Now let's take a look at another chart, um, and let's take a look at Detroit versus the New York Yankees. You'll notice it's the same ascendant, same setup. We've got these two benefics here, right? We've got this malefic here. The only difference that we have in this chart is that now Mars, at 4 degrees 34 minutes, is conjunct the 12 cusp 
of three degrees here. We have a two and a half degree orb where it's allowed. So in this chart, this was a much tougher game. By the way, Detroit was a three to one underdog. The odds were plus 295. Those of you who know sports and baseball know that teams with plus 295 just don't win or they're not expected to win. It's, it's tantamount to, it's a huge difference. It's a huge difference. Um, so, and Detroit won, uh, but they won in a much closer game. I think they won eight to seven and they were down and they came back to win. Um, so there's this chart again. Now, what did Mars do? Mars here is a little bit difficult to, um, to determine um, because Mars on the sixth cusp can be good, he can be bad, and one of the shortcomings of my techniques in the uh, Gambler's Dharma, in, and I'm very straightforward about it, is that I haven't quantified the effect of every planet in every situation. Uh, and to do so would require many, a few more years of research, and I felt that putting out this work, putting out this book now, was more valuable that, uh, even as an incomplete work than having all of the information at some later point in time. So Mars on the sixth cusp, is it good, is it bad? Well, we know Mars on the first cusp is good, or the seventh. Mars on the 10th cusp usually is bad, and then Mars on the 612, again, this is a case where, in this case, it seems like it was actually bad because this team, Detroit, barely won. I think they won eight to seven at the last minute, okay? Um, let's take a look at another chart here. Again, it's going to look very similar. Boom. What do we have here? Again, Aquarius, but these were all today. These are all the same day and all similar outcomes. We have Chicago versus Atlanta. Chicago was the underdog, a slight underdog, not, not too heavy. And again, we have the, you know, Mike Tyson's bodyguards and Mike Tyson right here with us the same con uh, configurations. Um, those of you who are a little more advanced, the, uh, the uh, cuspal, the, the sublords were also in the favor of the underdog. So we have a pretty clear picture. Um, here again, we have Mars in the sixth house. So uh, this was a tough game for Chicago. They won five to four. So it wasn't the clear victory. So it uh, that Seattle, for example, at 7-0, and they're still playing, I think it's still 7-0, yep, uh, is. Um, so, but still, the underdog won, and our prediction uh, came true, was correct, because the overwhelming evidence was in favor of the underdog, even if Mars is helping the favorite here. I hope this is making sense. Uh, and by the way, those of you, uh, those of you who are interested in more of uh, this type of information, I do have a full-fledged course on, uh, on all of these techniques, including techniques I don't cover in the book. And the, I guess the privilege or the, um, of being a VIP, uh, of being in the courses, you get to hit me up. So if there are certain games you have a question about and you have a strong desire to know, um, you know, if you're my student, you send me an email or call me and we take a look at that game together. And sometimes we, we won't be able to, sometimes it's undeterminable. It's too close to call. Uh, but sometimes, like today's games, they're pretty clear and it's really 15 minutes, 20 minutes of analysis and you have a, a pretty uh, clear conclusion. All right, so let's see another game. Today, uh, we also had the LA Angels playing Houston. Look, it's the same chart, okay? Guess who won this game? Yes, the heavily underdog. I think they were plus 250. LA Angels, I think it was something like that. Again, same chart, guys. Um, now, what the LA Angels have here also is a D9 where Jupiter is exactly conjunct the D9. So that also helped them. Um, but again, a clear-cut case of fixed karma for the underdog team. Let's do one final look at a chart. Um, we uh, This is the Purdue game, which is still actually going on, and this is a tight game. 
And I'm looking at it right now. It's 3127 for the underdog. So let's check this out. Um, here is the Purdue game. And again, now look here. This is very interesting. The sixth and the twelfth. Here's the twelfth cusp at exactly four degrees. Now this is a tight game. It's thirty-one twenty-seven as we speak, and there's there are two minutes left, thirty-one to twenty-seven, for the underdog. The underdog is winning, but why by so little? Well, look, Mars is on this cusp, so this is building a case for us to go. Okay. And this is how we build a case for what a planet is doing at any given time. Mars, when it's been on this sixth cusp, has shown, has made it difficult for the underdog. Whereas when he's not on the sixth cusp of the underdog team, so the six twelve axis, he the underdog is one seven you know seven nil four nil something like that. So Mars is making this game close. But another factor to consider is if this game started on time, that the ascendant, the seventh cusp, is also very close to the star Regulus. Regulus. However, probably not close enough, or else the underdog would have really blown them out. Um, because at seven degrees of, of the ascendant, it's just out of orb. Regulus is about five, six degrees, and this is all the way to seven. So we want this to be under one degree orb for it to really work. But again, this game, again, going on live and we don't know what's gonna happen, but because this Mars is keeping it close, but very likely the underdog, Northwestern in this case, Northwestern is the team playing Purdue, should pull it out. Uh, I haven't looked at the, uh, the sublords, but, um, uh, or some of the other stuff, but this is just a general analysis. So very clear, easy uh, charts to, to, to judge, and hopefully this has been useful to you guys. If you have any questions, go to spirittype.com. Uh, my course is available there, and, uh, or go to amazon.com and pick up Gambler's Dharma. And it is not just a book about gambling, it's a book about Jyotish, and it's a book about being able to peek over the shoulder of time and sp or of a god in the sense and look at the creation of time and space and look forward look backwards and make predictions that when done right and with proper technique can give us deep insight into the mechanics of of space and time really of of, of events and causality and when you apply then these techniques to your own life, it gives you more confidence. It gives you more confidence when you predict for a client or for yourself, hey, in this period, um, <laughs> I'm going to buy a foreign SUV. And today, I had forgotten I made this prediction. Some client told me that. And, um, and, but it's not magic. It was simply that in her chart, her subchart for vehicles, uh, Rahu was in the ascendant, and she was running a period of Rahu. And I simply stated what any astrologer would say, that during this Rahu period, you will get the, the, the fruit of this chart, which is a vehicle, and Rahu rules foreigners and outsiders, and it will be a foreign car. I don't know how I got SUV. That was maybe an inspiration of the moment. But the point is, that these rules are simple and once you know the magic trick it's not magic anymore and these rules were cognized by our ancestors and refined in the um in the fire and furnace of our own practice of which this is a part and and, and that's the essence of gambler's dharma is this is all practice to help us hone these new techniques all right Enough out of me, a lot of blah, 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 as you guys know, I like to talk. And uh, if you have any questions, uh, send me an email or reply to this video and uh, talk soon. Okay, namaste.